Welcome back, Math 241, Calculus 2 at NC State University. We are on uh, day 20, lecture 20 for this course. We are embarking in chapter 7, and we started it um, with the idea that we're going to look at some things called differential equations, equations that have possibly some unknown original function and some derivatives, first derivatives, second derivatives, third derivatives. Uh, the order of the differential equation is based on the um, nature of the derivative that is in that equation. So today we're going to look at kind of a, the visual uh, image of what a uh, differential equation might look like if we graphed it in the xy plane. So we're going to be given something about a differential equation. And we're in the second section of chapter 7 now. They call these things direction fields or slope fields. So a differential equation, let's say it has a first derivative in it, and let's say it's just something really, really simple. Let's say the derivative of y with respect to x is the x value. That's, you can't get a whole lot simpler than that. We'll look at the whole slope field for this in a moment. But at any point in the plane, if we want to know what the slope of the tangent line is, if the curve happens to contain that point, all we have to do is look at the x value, and this tells us that the slope at any point is the same as the x value. We're not going to generate lots of slope fields ourselves, but we do know when we see a slope field, we do need to know how to handle that. So let's say we're at the point 2, 1. If we're at the point 2, 1, and if our curve, ultimately our curve goes through that, remember we had a family of curves yesterday, so we want to pick the one that goes through this point. The slope at this point should be the x value, therefore the slope, if it goes through this point, would be what? It would be 2. So we would go up 2 and over 1. So you'll see a bunch of tiny little line segments in these things called slope fields or direction fields. Have you dealt with slope fields before? Okay, so we're not going to generate lots of these pictures, but that's how each individual slope is generated. We know the derivative. It's a, described in terms of x or x and y or just y alone. We end up with this mass of little tiny line segments in the plane. Uh, all they are is these slope fields are kind of signposts or guideposts that if the curve goes through there, then the curve does something like this. It kind of lays up against there in that fashion, or maybe the curve is down here and it lays up against that little segment that constitutes the slope of the tangent line at that point. It has to be that. That's the way the differential equation has described it. So we would expect then if we come out here to 3, doesn't really matter what the y value is. It matters what the x value is. That's the slope. So at 3, 1, it would be a little bit steeper. At 4, 1, it would be even steeper than that. And we generate this thing, which has a bunch of these line segments on it. And let's take a look at, if I can find it quickly, what this would look like. And we'll come back to this. If we were to put all these together, this would be the slope field for dy over dx equals x. So we might as well talk about this. Um, this was generated in Maple. Uh, this little package, I think you've used repeatedly, the with student package, right, in Maple. So this is another package with DE tools. So that activates a lot of the stuff that you would do with differential equations. So here is the differential equation itself. DEQ, that's the name of it. It is diff y of x with respect to x, so that's basically dy over dx, equals x. So there's the statement of the differential equation. And then this is a DE plot. 
that what we named this up here, we're going to plot that from x equals negative 4 to 4 and y equals negative 4 to 4. So we end up with this slope field. So here's the kind of the maple ease version of this. Its name is DEQ. What is it? It's derivative of y with respect to x equals x. So then it generates this. We were at the point 2, 1, and we knew that the slope was 2. Well, look at every place where the, the, y, the x value is 2. What's the slope at every one of these points where the x value is 2? It's 2. Jump over here to x equals 3. The slope at every one of these points where x is 3 is 3, and so on. So you can see the commonalities of the graph based on the fact that it's a pretty simple differential equation. The slope is always the x value. Where is it flat? Where is this particular family of curves, if we were to put some in here, where would they be flat? On the y-axis, because on the y-axis the x value is 0, therefore the slope is 0. So at all these points in here, the slope is actually 0. Can you visualize the curves that would fit in this particular family of curves? So as long as we stipulate, we want the one that goes through the point 2, 1. Well, 2, 1 is right here. So what would that look like? That might look something like something like that, right? And wouldn't it have a, a mirror image over here, the same thing? Is that what you would expect for something that has x for its derivative? Well, let's anti-differentiate and see what we would expect. If y prime is x, what is it that has x for its derivative? One half x squared. One half x squared, <coughs> right? So y would be 1 half x squared plus c. Is that what you visualize in here? A bunch of those 1 half x squareds plus c? So the 1 half, does that make it a little fatter than our old friend y equals x squared or a little skinnier? Better. Makes it a little fatter, right? Which these ought to look a little fatter, so if we want the one that goes through this point, maybe it looks like this. So all these little slope fields, these little line segments, kind of tell us where the curve should be going if the curve, in <laughs> fact, is in that vicinity. If we've got one that's down here, then we've got these, again, these signposts that tell us where the curve is if it's down here. So it can be that simple. dy over dx equals the x value, and we know what these look like. They're falling into this format. If we force it to go through a certain point, then that allows us to focus in on a specific value for C. Other than that, it is a family of curves. All right, this will change things drastically. I think this is from our book somewhere. Direction field for this differential equation. So we looked at a real simple one dy over dx equals x. The slope is the x value at every point. That's significantly different, but that is a description of what the slope is at any specific point. Can you visualize some different curves in this particular slope field? If it comes up through this point, it looks like it dips down, right, and comes up here. Maybe it dips down not quite so far. I don't know. Let's graph these. So there's a whole bunch of solutions. Let's suppose that the y of 0 is 1. That means when x is 0, y is 1. So there's 0, 1. What's that look like? Right there, it's flat, right? Is that true, by the way? At the point 0, 1, 0 for x, it doesn't really matter what y is, right? If x is 0, the slope is 0. So if you'll notice that x equals 0, the slope is always 0. Shouldn't it, what, head upward and then flatten out, something like that, if that's the slope field that represents this set of points? 
Looks like we've got a symmetric image over here. That's one of the members, kind of rough, um, of this family of curves. How about this one? Y of 0 equals 2. So it goes through the point 0, 2. Is that a different looking curve? It's slightly different looking. Looks like it comes up here and then is asymptotic there again. But it doesn't dip down quite so far. Different looking, but kind of similarly shaped. The next one's very different looking. Y of 0 equals pi. What's that look like? It's linear, isn't it? And that's an, that's an equilibrium solution. Why would that be true? Because don't we have the sine of y, right? And the sine of pi is 0. And at all of these, isn't the y value going to be pi? right? So we're always going to get zero. Well, if the rate of change is zero, it's not changing at all, so it's flat all the way across. So this is a, an equilibrium solution. How about y of zero equals four? Now we're up here. Again, a very different looking curve from the first two because these are asymptotic but coming in from the other side. And y of 0 equals 5. We end up with a curve that looks like that. So you've got a whole bunch of possible curves, including an equilibrium solution. We found one of them. Is there another one? At 0. At 0, right? So down here, it's flat all the way across. There's an equilibrium solution. Why is that? Because the x value is 0 all the time. It doesn't really matter what the y value is because 0 times the sine of whatever y is is going to be 0. Are there other equilibrium solutions that aren't pictured here? 2 pi. Same thing going the other direction. Every pi units, right? So we're going to have equilibrium solutions first one is at 0, and what, every pi radians from there? How would we write that? N, n times pi, where n is what? All real Not all real numbers. Integer. We want it to be an integer, right? Some integer multiple of pi. Integer normally is a capital Z. That would be a good little research project, why it's called capital Z for integers. I is irrationals. Um, but that ought to take care of all of them, right? Does that take care of the ones down here also? Because that'd be 0 plus negative 1 times pi. So we're going to capture all the equilibrium solutions in that statement. Questions about that before it moves? So you're not going to have to generate these by hand, but they're very easy to do in Maple. Um, with that DE plots command. Okay, I think this is in your book. Here's a slope field. We have no idea what the equation is, but can you visualize a lot of different curves in this particular slope field? This is on page 506. I think it's the same thing. This is actually from the previous edition, but I think it's the same equation. Looks like if they're coming up here, they're going to kind of have this little dip in here, right? And then go back up. So here's a variety of solutions from this particular slope field. So if, it force, if we're forcing it to capture this point right here, how would it do that? It follows the slope field. Little signposts, that's all they are that tell the graph where to go if it goes through that point. Looks like these are almost simultaneous here, but this one does something radically different from the one that's slightly above it, simply because it captured this point. 
and it dips back down through here and then comes back up. One that goes through this point. So we have different looking curves. They have some similarity, but they all have the same differential equation. That differential equation, let's see if I can find it. Um, I don't see it. Okay, it's not all that relevant. Just we're looking at a slope field. These are some different uh, members of that family of curves. All right, here is a maple version. Differential or the diff of y of x with respect of x equals y. There's the command. So here's our equation. Derivative of y with respect to x is y. Here's what they look like. It goes through this point, it comes over here, it comes over here and goes through this point. It looks like they're all asymptotic to the x-axis. They might be down here. A lot of different members of this family of curves. I bet you know what the solution is to this. What is a y thing that we can take the derivative of y and it's the same thing as what we started with? e to the x would be a solution. Right? Can you see e to the x in here? Something that looks like this, right? And other variations of that? Well, what? how could we get other variations of this? We could have some constants involved, right? And the derivatives of the constants wouldn't appear. How else could we have a... Okay, we could have a coefficient out in front that would change it. Could we have a negative 1 out in front? Could we have an e to the negative x, possibly? Would that work? Is the derivative of e to the negative x also e to the negative x? Not quite, right? It's the negative of itself, so that's slightly different from this. But we could have other coefficients which will take this image here and reflect it down, right? So we could have some coefficients out in front. So we've got a whole bunch of different shapes, but all of them above the axis are similarly shaped to this, and all of them below the axis are similarly shaped to that. We'll have a technique to solve. We won't have to make a, a, a guess at this. Our first technique of uh, solving differential equations will be those that are s called separable differential equations. We'll isolate or separate the x's and the dx's from the y's and the dy's, and we'll be able to solve for y. Okay, another one. Here's the differential equation. Looks like dy over dx is the x value minus the y value. Now that looks like a pretty simple differential equation. That actually is a pretty difficult problem to do in terms of a separable differential equation. Things that are added and subtracted are going to be difficult to deal with. Things that are multiplied and or divided will be relatively easy to deal with because we can move them around where we want to, uh, to isolate the x's and dx's from the y's and the dy's. So if we take the x value, subtract away the y value, we get the slope at any point. So where do you see the flat places here? Where would the slope of the tangent lines be zero? Y equals x. When x and y are the same, right? If x and y are the same and you subtract one from the other, you get zero. So look at a point where the x and the y are the same. Here's the point 2, 2, right? Slope of the tangent is zero. So we've got a little flat line segment right here. We could come to the point 3, 3, if I can find it, right here. The slope of the tangent is zero. So you've noticed some similarities as you work your way up. If the x and the y value are the same, and we subtract one from the other, we should expect to get zero. So there's the flat places on this graph. So 0, 0, it's flat. 
one, one, it's flat. So you see all these flat places all the way up the diagonal. Um, what could the curve look like? Could look something like this. Right? And we've got it asymptotic in that fashion to the line y equals x. And a whole bunch of different curves that uh, could be illustrated down here as well. So we do have a family of curves for the differential equation. All right, one more of these, and we'll talk about how we can use Euler's method to approximate solutions. So here's one where the derivative of y with respect to x is the x value divided by the y value. Let's just pick another number other than zero. Where would the slope be negative one? Two negative one. I mean, one, one negative one. Okay, one negative one. Negative one, one. Negative one, one. So in general, those are some specifics. In general, where would the slope be negative one? When x and y are equal, but one of them is a negative number. Right. So they're equal in magnitude. One is positive and one is negative, right? The slope would be negative one. So if you check out some points like that, we had some examples, you'll see that the slope is negative one. Where is the slope positive one? Well, the x and the y value would have to be the same, right? So at the point two, two, we should expect the slope to be what? One? up one and over one. At the point negative two, two, we should expect the slope to be negative one. Where would the slope be zero? For a fraction to be zero, what has to be zero? The top. So as long as x is zero, the slope is zero, right? Now what about zero, zero? What about the solution that actually contains the origin? It's got an undefined slope, right? If the y value is zero, in fact, probably worse than that, isn't zero over zero worse than just good old fashioned undefined? What is zero over zero? 11? Sure. That'll work. 14, negative seven? It's whatever you want it to be, it's which is kind of worse than undefined. It's awfully defined, it's too defined. Uh, we've got way too many descriptions or definitions for zero over zero. What do you think? Do you think we're going to have a solution that goes through the origin? I don't know. What are you seeing when you look at this slope field? Everything's going away from it. Everything's kind of going away from it. So if we had a solution, let's say, that's up here, is that what you're seeing? And we maybe have its image down here. What is that? Hyperbola, right? So maybe we've got uh, a family of hyperbolas. Do you think that's the only position that we could have in the plane? I guess we could have some over here, right? Maybe a hyperbola over here or a branch of it over here and its symmetric image over here. So this could very well be a family of hyperbolas where the slope of the tangent is the x value divided by the y value. Obviously, we're not going to have both of these simultaneously because then we would be talking about something that's not a function. So if we had the green set, we would have its image, but not these two. So we've got either a hyperbola with branches opening up and down or, scrap that, another hyperbola or a set of hyperbolas that open left and right. All right, we're going to have an approximating technique called Euler's method. To come up with a sketch of the real curve based on the differential equation. Euler's method uses linear approximation.
we're going to approximate what is going on along the curve by what's happening along a line that's tangent to the curve. Why would we want to use tangent lines having started with the differential equation? That's what the differential equation is, right? Is a description of the slope of the tangent. So we're not going to have the luxury all the time of having the exact curve, but let's say that the exact curve looks something like this. We know for a fact that the curve goes through this point. We're going to use the differential equation, which is a description of the slope of the tangent, to say, I want to try to keep track of that curve, but I can only do so incrementally by going along the tangent line to the curve not quite increments like this big, but so we're going to use the slope of the tangent and say I know, I don't know where the curve itself is, but I know where the tangent to the curve is, and if I use my increments small enough, if I choose a point on the tangent line, it's going to be pretty darn close to the actual curve itself. So we really want to choose way closer than what I'm going to do here, but we're going to come out here, some delta x, and we're going to say that this is our approximation for where the curve actually is. Of course, we have the luxury here of having the curve, and we know that we're not on the curve. We're on the tangent line to the curve, which begins to separate from the curve. Then, with Euler's method, we reload. We determine the slope of the tangent again. So maybe the slope of the tangent now comes up here. And instead of choosing a point on the curve, because we don't know where the curve is, we choose a point that is over delta x units along the tangent to the curve. And you can see how they begin to separate, because we're using an approximation to do a further approximation, so we get further and further away from the actual curve. But eventually, we end up with something that has a similar shape to what the real curve looks like. In absence of some exact method of solution, this is not bad. And if you keep delta x small, I'll put that in quotes because what is small for one problem may not be small enough for another problem. If the curve goes up very steeply, um, this kind of changes what small is. We, we would need our increments to be very, very small because the curve changes so rapidly. If the curve is fairly flat, we don't have to be quite so small with the delta x values. So here's some pictures um, of what it is we're going to do. Again, we're not going to have the real curve, the luxury of having the real curve in most cases. So here's the real solution curve. We're going to approximate along a line that's tangent to the curve, and we'll do that iteratively, so we'll do that here, reload, get a new tangent line, go along the new tangent line, reload, get a new tangent line, so it begins to look something like this. So what we have is a bunch of kind of points that are on line segments, but you could connect them and make a curve out of them. It ought to approximate the solution curve itself. And we can compare and contrast once we get some methods to find the actual solution curve. In some cases, we already know what it is. So how will we do that? How does Euler's method actually work? So we're going to start with some initial x value and some initial y value, a starting point, just like this point right here. We know it's on the curve because we're forcing the curve to contain that point. What we don't know is any other points that are necessarily on the solution curve. So we get our x0 and we get our y0. That's our starting point. Okay, That's handed to us for the most part. We start with that. Then we want to find our next x value. So we're going to use the tangent line eventually to get to our next point. Well, to get to our next x value, we just simply add this change in x to it. That's easy. So each time you want to crawl along in terms of x, add delta x to your previous x value, and you're there. Here's what we really want. 
where's the new y value? That's the one we have to work at, and that's the one we have to use the differential equation for. So we'll go back to our old y value. And here's kind of where Euler's method using the differential equation. We're going to take what we know dy over dx to be. That's going to be given to us, the differential equation. It'll be x over y or the x value or x minus y. We're going to use the derivative and we're going to multiply that by delta x. So the new x is the old x plus the change in x. The new y is the old y plus, well, it'd be nice if we knew the exact change in y. We don't. So we have to approximate. I don't know if this helps. It helps me. I don't know if it helps you. I kind of think of that dx and that delta x kind of knocking each other out. And then we're left with dy. It kind of sounds like a change in y, doesn't it? dy is actually the change in y along the tangent to the curve, not along the curve itself. But this is our differential equation. It gets plugged into that spot. That's our slope. That's our dy over dx. And we continue that process to get x2. We'll take our previous x value. Those are always easy. Just keep adding delta x to the previous x value to get y2, we'll take our previous y so this iterative process is called Euler's method it's flawed it has its flaws, we've seen it in the picture why is it flawed? because first of all we're using a tangent line to the curve and not the curve itself and we're using an approximated value to start to approximate further. So we actually end up getting further and further away from the curve, even though it probably has a somewhat similar shape. So how far do we go with this? It kind of depends on what we're directed to do, or maybe we know um, the y of 0 is a certain value, and they tell us to approximate until we get the y of 1 or the y of 2 and how many increments we have, how many steps we have along the way. All right, first example. We pick one that we've already looked at. Uh, let's start with this one. I'm, I'm going to take this diagram away. So we kind of have an idea what the finished picture is going to look like or might look like. Let's take the one that goes through the point, um, I don't know, let's pick one. Zero, one. So we're going to pick this curve. It's going to come through here. So our differential equation. Pretty simple. It's just the y value. Now, it's not the new y value. It's the previous y value. We're always using the, the previous data to generate new data. And we want uh, x sub 0 to be 0 and y sub 0 to be 1. And let's just pick the delta x in this problem to be 0.25, and let's just keep going until we get, um, we want to see what the y value is when x is 1. So we want to go through four steps with this, crawling along 0.25 each time we go in terms of x. So we have our initial point. What's our x1? We just take our old x and we add a quarter to it. That's easy. Old x is 0 plus 0.25. So the x value of our new point, we hope is pretty close to the solution curve, is 0.25.
So our new y, y1, is the old y, y0, plus the derivative. Well, what is the derivative on this problem? It's the y value, okay? So the old y is 1, plus the derivative is the y value. So we're pulling that directly from the differential equation that's given to us. So the old y value is what? We use all this data to generate x1, y1. So we're using x0, y0 to generate x1, y1. So what's the old y? 1? Is that right? So there's the old y value. There's y0 times delta x. So we get 1.25. Does that work? So there's our new point. Because we're using, we can't use the new y yet because we're trying to generate the new y. So we have to use the previous data. So we're going along the tangent to the curve to find a new point. We don't know where that point is yet, so we're using the old point as our starting point. So we have no idea what y1 is. So the only y value that we know anything about is this one. The only x value we know anything about is this one. So we use the old data to generate the new data all the way through the process. Because, mainly because we don't know the new y yet. We're trying to find the new y. So from our picture, and we know what this looks like because we've looked at the slope field, we started out with the point zero, 1. Now we have a new point that we think is pretty darn close to the solution curve. It's over a quarter and up one and a quarter. Does that work? So let's generate a new point. So we want x2. X's are always easy. Previous x, 0.25. We're going to add the change in x, 0.5. y2 is y1 plus, I'm going to just go ahead and write the first derivative. What is dy over dx? It's the y value. What y value? The previous y value, right? Times this delta x value. So really, this becomes y1, right? We want y1 plus the previous y value. That's the slope of the tangent times delta x. y1 is 1.25 plus this previous y value, 1.25 times the change in x. So this is 5 fourths times one-fourth is five-sixteenths added to one and a quarter. Somebody tell me what that is. Anybody got a calculator out and working? So there's our x2, y2. No mystery about the x. We started at zero, we went a quarter, and then we went over another quarter. So we're at 0.5. The y value. So back to our picture. We're now over here at a half, and we're up 1.5625. Is that kind of what we expected based on our slope field that we looked at earlier? It's probably underneath, right, where we should be, but it's relatively close. You don't have to write this out each time. I'm just writing it out because it's our first example. You can just add the increment each time to x. What's the slope? The slope is the y value times delta x. So what is y2? 
0.5625 plus that same value, since it is also the slope, times the change in x. Katie, we're trusting your calculator here. 9531. So there's our new point, 0 0.75, 1.9531. 1 so we go back to our picture, 0 0.75, 1.95. So you can see that we're ending up with what we thought we would get. Not exactly. Now, how do you know when to stop? Well, we're going to be given something like this, we want the y of 1. What is y when x is 1, which tells us to go one more step, right? We want x4 in this case. So we are at x equals 1. That tells us we're at the place we want to stop in terms of x. We want y4, which is y3, plus slope. What is the slope? The slope is the y value. So what was that number? 1.9531 plus that same number, which is the slope, times delta x. So that should be our approximation for the y value when x is 1. What's that? 2.44. Is that all right with the process? Euler's method? Looks like Euler's method, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. He'd be offended, I think, if we called him Euler. Uh, let's look at one other. All right, a little bit more to it. We'll do a couple iterations through. The slope this time is x minus y. So it's not just the y value. We've got to take the previous x minus the previous y, that generates the slope. We multiply that by delta x. Uh, let's see what we want this to look like. Let's make it go through the point. So let's make that. Now that's actually on the final solution curve. I mean, when we get to choose the point, that's the one we want the curve to go through. Now from this point, though, we're going to approximate what we think the curve does based on this initial point. Let's just get a couple of iterations. That's probably all we have time for today. So delta x. Um, I don't know. The smaller we make delta x, the better we're going to get. I don't know if I showed this earlier. Have I showed that yet? These are approximations to a curve. You can see the solution curve, which is the top one up here. And as you choose different values for delta x, you do a better job of approximating. So if we let delta x be smaller, you can see the difference in the proximity to the actual solution curve. So if delta x is chosen fairly wisely, or it's, sometimes we don't have the choice, it's just given to us. So let's say that, uh, just to make it different, let's say it's 0.2. What's x1? One. 
1.2. So the beginning x, x0 is 1. We're going to add delta x to that. So it's 1.2. In fact, we're just going to add 0.2 all the way through to the x. So the new y is the old y. What's our slope this time? Isn't the slope x minus y? Right? New differential equation. We want to take that times delta x. Well, what are the numbers for that? y0 is 2. So we're going to use the previous point to generate this new point. So the previous x minus its corresponding y value. So that's what? 1 minus 2? There's the slope times delta x, which is 0.2. So what do we get? This one's not increasing. It's decreasing, isn't it? 1.8? So x1, y1, we went over 0.2 in terms of x, but the y value fell from 2 to 1.8. Let's do one more. x2, previous x plus delta x, that's 1.2 plus 0.2. y2 is y1 plus slope. Slope here is x minus y. y1, 1.8. Now, aren't we using x1, y1 to generate y2, right? We're using the previous values to generate our new value. So x, 1.2, minus y, 1.8 times delta x. Does that look right? We're using x1, y1 to generate x2, y2. So let's see what we have here. There's a negative 0.6 times 0.2, which is negative 0.12. Is that right? 1.68? So our new value, which will be our last value today, now would we expect this, these values to be falling? Let's see. Let's see what see if we're right here. So we started out at the point two, no, at the point one, two, which is somewhere in here. Shouldn't we expect, according to what the slope field says? Shouldn't we expect our y values to fall for a while and then for them to pick back up, right? So it seems to be matching what the slope field actually looks like. All right, we'll continue with this section, um, some circuit problems tomorrow, and I will see you then.